Hello there. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a Sicilian style pizza dough. Nice crispy bottom, nice fluffy center, and a, a bit of a trigger warning to any of my Italian viewers. It's not going to be perfectly authentic. This is just something to help people start making pizza dough at home and stop buying it at the store because it's really not that difficult. So let's get to it. And to make it a little bit easier, Here's the ingredients. Alright. And if it sounds like there's a power washer in the background, that's because there is. The apartment complex has decided that they want to power wash all the steps and things, and I've tried to film this video about three or four times, and I'm finally just giving up. So here we are. This recipe isn't super difficult, you just have to keep a few things in mind because little inconsistencies make a big difference with something as specific as any kind of bread, especially pizza dough. I'm using a regular active dry yeast, which you can find at pretty much any grocery store. The olive oil that you choose is going to make a big difference as well because it's going to impart a lot of the flavors that the dough has beyond the yeast and then picking the right flour is important. What you want to go for is a double zero flour, if you can find it. I wasn't able to because the store was sold out, so I got King Arthur bread flour, which is not as good, maybe a few tiers lower, but good enough for what we're doing. And the dough is going to taste different and not as good the lower down the list of flours you get. If you get all the way to all-purpose flour, this isn't going to taste as good or work as well as if you got a double O flour or a bread flour or just anything kind of tearing down the list. If you don't know the tiers of flour, I'll try and put a picture of it right here so that you can see it, but it does make a difference in your pizza dough. I'm going to start with some room temperature water. Now a lot of people start their pizza dough with a warmed up water at about like 100 degrees or so, but what that's going to do is make the yeast really active and I don't want that. The longer my pizza dough is able to proof, the more flavor it's going to have. So I'm going to start with room temperature water just to give the yeast a little bit of time before they get really excited and start making my dough. To do that, I'm going to take my water and add my honey to it and then whisk that in so that it's combined. So when I add my yeast, they have something to eat on. And this is less about trying to start your yeast and more about making sure it's alive. Because the last thing you want to do is go through the effort of making your dough only to find out that you had a dead yeast and you have to throw it away because it's not going to do anything. Go ahead and give that a little whisk just to make sure all the honey and water are combined. This is my favorite part. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see very quickly that this yeast is very alive and active as soon as I add it to this water. What's going to happen is it's going to try and sink to the bottom after you mix it and then it's going to immediately start floating to the top and just look very angry. And that's so you know your yeast is ready to go. Give that a little whisk in, make sure it's combined. Now this is going to happen a little bit slower than it would if you had warm water because the yeast is going to take longer to kind of activate but you'll be able to tell when it goes. It's starting to come back up to the top a little bit, so I know my yeast is alive, so I can move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna need a large mixing bowl and our old friend, Spatchy Boy. We're gonna go ahead and dump our yeast and our water and our honey into our mixing bowl. Try and make sure you get all the yeast out of there if you can. There's going to be a little left. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and add my salt, my olive oil. And the better olive oil you use, the better flavor your pizza dough is going to have. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of my flour just to get it going. And start incorporating all that. 
you could use a, a whisk at this point. I'm just going to use old Spatchy Boy because I don't want to dirty up any more than I have to, really. As per the usual, you could use a KitchenAid for this and save your arms the, uh, the ache. I've got one, but I want to show you that it is possible with like $20 worth of equipment. I would use a KitchenAid if you have one and save yourself a little bit of trouble. You don't have to. You don't need a $900 piece of equipment. Just a mixing bowl and a rubber spatula and some elbow grease and you'll be able to make you some pizza dough. You might would think this was pancake batter if it didn't smell like feet. Make sure to scrape your edges so you don't lose anything. Oh, added a little too much at once on that one. Just have to be a little careful. Another reason you want to scrape the edges of your bowl is because the amount of flour that you're using is very specific and you don't want any wasted. It's better to measure your flour with a kitchen scale, but mine is broken. So I had to just eyeball it a little bit and use some technique to uh, get the right consistency. Kitchen scale is a good investment. If you do a lot of baking, you're going to need one. Makes everything a lot more accurate. And then you don't have to kind of fix as you go and you can get it really consistent every time. Just a touch more flour. I should be at the consistency I want. I want it to kind of stick to the pan, but not like crazy stick to the pan. That's looking pretty good. Comes off fairly easily. Next what I want to do is on my clean work surface add a little bit of flour. And I'm going to take my dough and put it in that pile of flour and cover it with the bowl for about 30 minutes to help hydrate the gluten that's in the pizza dough. And then we'll be able to knead it and start proofing it. And we're just going to cover it and I'll see you in 30 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uncover my dough. It's gotten a little bit bigger because it was trying to rise just a little bit. That's why we use the room temperature water is to kind of slow that process. Now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of flour over the top and then I'm going to use the palm of my hand to like grab it and pull it and then fold it back over on itself and then spin it so it's like grab pull set spin grab pull spin and then like that process over and over again it's a nice little sprinkle of flour and then i'm going to get a little bit of flour on my hands just to keep myself from sticking and try and make sure I keep underneath the dough nice and floured. If I didn't already say, the reason that you let it cover like that is to create gluten strands and let it start trying to proof just so that when you knead it, it gets better incorporated and it'll actually help it rise better later on.
the more you need the dough right now, the better off you'll be. Trust me. This is going to make a bit of a mess. It's fine. Don't stress yourself out about it. It's pretty easy to clean. It's going to get all of your hands. If you've got hairy fingers like I do, it's going to get stuck in your hair. It's going to get stuck on your skin. It's going to take a little bit to clean off. Just work at it a little bit. Luckily I've got gloves on so I don't have to worry about it as much but if you're not wearing gloves it's going to be a little annoying I promise you. Another reason this recipe only called for two and a quarter cups of flour instead of two and a half or more is because we were going to be adding more flour now and you don't want to add all of your flour right at the beginning. I couldn't say for sure how much extra flour I'm adding right now. If I had to guess, it's close to a quarter cup or a half cup. But really, it's just kind of by eye until your dough gets the right consistency. And what you want is like a nice sheen on it. And for it to get a little bit tough to knead. Which I am closely approaching. This will give you a bit of a workout too. A little added bonus. There is a thing you can do when you're making dough to make sure it's done and the gluten's right. Basically what you want to do is pull it and if you can see through the dough or see the light on the other side, it's pretty good to go, which is the window pane test. I can tell I need to go a little bit longer because this isn't quite getting there. this see if I can't stretch it good enough that I can kind of see through it oh, still trying to break a little bit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not add any more flour and just get this incorporated fully I should be able to get closer to that goal Very carefully Stretch it, see if I can get some nice light through it without breaking the dough. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can see it, but it's really thin, pretty well incorporated. So I'm just going to knead it a little bit more and try and get the rest of this flour off my countertop. And I will show you what we're going to do next. We're going to take just a tiny bit of olive oil and put it in our mixing bowl. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and get it all around it. Now you don't want a bunch pooling, you just want a tiny thin layer of olive oil in your pan. And then for the dough ball, all I'm going to do is fold all the corners into themselves onto one side of it, or what I'm going to use is the bottom. And just keep folding it over itself, little by little. And what that's going to do is help me get a nice little dough ball. And to seal that, I'm just going to take it and kind of run it in circles on my board. And that's going to help it all pull and get really taut. And then that'll seal the bottom up and you've got a nice little dough ball. And with the paper towel that you stole some olive oil on, get some olive oil on the outside of your pizza dough so that while it's rising, it doesn't try and dry out and crack, which is a common problem depending on where you live. If you're in a drier place, maybe use a little bit more olive oil. If you're in a very humid place, you probably don't need to use as much. I'm just going to get a little bit of olive oil all over, remembering that this is the bottom of my pizza dough, and that's going to need to be what goes into my bowl. So I'm going to set my pizza dough ball in the bowl, and this is where we hit the crossroads for the video. 
So you can proof this on the countertop to use it that day for a minimum of four hours. Four to six hours is about what you want. Or you can put it in the fridge for 24 hours and then come back to it the next day. The longer you let your dough rise and proof, the better it's going to taste. So if you put it in the fridge overnight, by the time you get to the next day, you're going to get more of that yeasty bread delicious flavor. But if you only give it an hour or two, two hours, four hours on the countertop, it's not going to be quite as good. So the longer you can let this go, or the farther ahead you can plan it out, the better off you'll be. I'm trying to make this for dinner tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and just let it sit on the countertop for probably like five hours, give or take. That's about how long I have. And it'll be ready to go, and I can meet you then. But I would suggest that you put it in the fridge for the 24 hours, because it's going to end up tasting better and be a little bit easier to work with. I've got some clean film. I'm just going to put it over the top of this fairly loosely, because I want a little bit of the gases to be able to escape. If you wrap this too tight, it'll poof up and slow down the proofing process. And I don't want that, so I'm just going to give this a nice little wrap. And there you are. Lord help me. This is probably the third time I've tried to film this video and something's gone wrong. This last time, I forgot to take my camera off of time lapse, so about 15 minutes worth of footage that I had to edit down turned into 9 seconds of time lapse, which I'm going to play right here for your amusement. This has been a true testament to patience and perseverance. I could have given up on this and come back months later. I thought about it a couple times, but I wanted to get this done just to do it. Just to know that I wasn't going to let this pizza dough beat me. I wasn't going to let the power washer in the apartment complex beat me. I wasn't going to let the late gardeners that showed up mid-afternoon and ruined about an hour and a half's worth of raw footage get me down. But with that being said, it's proofed. This is not the same dough from the time lapse, but it's the same recipe, and I let it go about a half hour longer than the other one, so it's going to be the exact same. All we need to do now is sprinkle a little flour on the countertop and pull this out, being careful to not fold it or mix it, just get it off the edges and then lift it out and set it on the flour. Just a light sprinkle will do. You don't need anything crazy because we don't want our dough to try and pick up too much flour. Then I'm going to flour my fingertips to make this a little bit easier. All we're going to do is release it from this side. Little by little. And get up underneath it and get it off the bottom of the bowl. Just a little bit. Then I'm just going to kind of reshape it just a little bit, make sure there's enough flour on the bottom, that it's not going to stick to my work surface. We're going to flour the bottom when we go to bake it anyway, so this isn't going to hurt anything. Just try and not get a lot of flour over the top of it if you can avoid it. And then I've got a damp cloth, not wet. If I squeeze it, like nothing's going to come out, you just want it damp. Then I'm just going to cover my pizza with that and let it sit for about 30 minutes so that it can reform and get a little firmer and then I'll be able to stretch it out and make a pizza with it. So I'll see you when that's done. Alrighty, let's see how she looks. I'd say that's a pretty good looking pizza dough if I ever saw one. And at this point, you can do whatever you want to it. 
You can stretch it out on a sheet tray and bake it. I've got a little pizza pan. However you want to cook it, it's all up to you. I'll usually bake my pizza at about 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. It works pretty well with this dough. One thing I like about this dough is it cooks really well in a home oven. You don't need a fancy pizza tray or some crazy anything. Just like a cheap pizza dish will do for you or a sheet tray, which I'm sure you have. You can add whatever ingredients you like to it. It's your pizza. There's no wrong way to eat it. However you want to eat the pizza, eat the pizza that way. Put pineapple on it, mushrooms, whatever. It doesn't matter. One thing I will say is I try not to use flour on the pan that I'm baking it on. I prefer to use semolina, which is a, a durum wheat that's ground really coarse. Most people think it's cornmeal that's on pizzas like that. It's not. It's semolina. It's a little hard to find at some grocery stores, but if you do find it, go ahead and grab a bag if you make pizza really often. And after two weeks and four times trying to film this, I think I can finally say, if it's bad for the heart, it's good for the soul. I'll see you all in the next one.